Hello Sagittarius, that new moon that's just occurred in your 12th house uh, in the sign of Scorpio is uh, pretty important as far as your ability to open up to things you don't believe or that seem uh, incredulous. And this is November 2013. I'm Didichi from astrology.com.au and uh, it's important that we note for you just now, this 12th house, the hidden house, the house of secrets, it has something to do with your past as well, those skeletons in the closet. We talked about that briefly when I referred to Saturn being in the 12th house uh, and staying there for some time more. But now the Sun and Mercury in its retrograde movement, giving you some, I suppose, um, reminiscent thoughts about what you've done, trying to understand the implications of your actions but also your thoughts and your words, not just your deeds, as these also have karmic consequence. I like to say to people that, uh, and some of them disagree with me, that uh, karma is not so much about your actions. It's got more to do with your intentions. So, you know, as soon as we judge others or ourselves by what we're doing in terms of what we feel the ramifications are going to be, we're sort of 50% there. The other half is the intention behind what we do. So this period, especially the first couple of weeks of the month, I think have to do with really uh, objectively analyzing those inner sort of motivations that we have in our dealings with people in the world at large. So now we're at the sixth and there are some other important transits I'd like to just very quickly go through. You know, you can look at more of this on my site. I'll give you the details for that later. Uh, and we see that, uh, let me just get this file up here so we can get a chronology of dates. Um, we talked about Mercury uh, being very, very powerful there. Um, this 12th house also is a house of sexuality and intimacy. Uh, but I think it's got more to do with the relationship you have with yourself right now. It's a very personal sort of area of the horoscope. And it does mean for you to fully connect with uh, these elements of your personality, you need to go into yourself. We see also the eclipse of the, the transiting sun on the 12th, uh, on, in the 12th house on the 3rd uh, is accentuating this fact. That's the new moon that I just talked about, indicating a whole new approach to the way you regard yourself, your karma, your past, these sorts of things. And right now you can look forward to some excellent aspects uh, between uh, Venus and Neptune and Mercury and Venus, then again, uh, Mars and Saturn, all very constructive, all very, very flowing, if I could use that word. <coughs> and uh, along with the, what we call the stationary movement of Jupiter, your ruler, the period of the 7th till around the 10th, I think is very, very important and highlights some of these points that I'm making today. There's an excellent opportunity for you to uh, get back into the swing of your creative and professional pursuits when Mercury and Neptune move into an excellent aspect on the uh, 10th. <coughs> and the other reason this will be good is because uh, Mercury, which is your planet of relationships and uh, business partnerships, and generally the, the world at large, uh, stops its, its backward cycling goes into what we call a stationary. That's like where it appears to be completely still in the heavens and then moves forward. So that gives you the go ahead to sort out any of these thoughts, these internal processes that we've been alluding to today. So that's nice. And I would say there's a good forward movement for you from around the 11th. Give that about a week to kick in because often the mistake that even astrologers make is to say that the moment Mercury moves forward, then everything's back on track. Actually, uh, what I found is that you need to wait for Mercury to get to that point where it decided to go in backward motion. That might take a week or two, and then things will be back on track. There's an interesting aspect there between Venus and Uranus that happens around the middle of the month on the 15th. That gives a lot of intensity to your social life. And uh, we see here that Venus actually has something to do with your work ruling the 6th sector and the 11th so it's not a good idea to mix business with pleasure around that time or leading up to it and for many of you born under the centaur you can expect some abrupt or unexpected turnaround in your work 
commitments uh, and your work schedule. So just factor that into your diary and be, be prepared as most good Boy Scouts are supposed to be. Even if you're not a good Boy Scout, it's not a bad policy to be prepared, which is what astrology is all about, right? Uh, other great looking aspects here for you around the 20th, Mars in sextile to Jupiter. This is a 10th house, 8th house combination. This has to do with money, shared money, or for those of you in business, a time to positively spend money, investing it into your business or profession. And, um, you know, Jupiter is the natural planet of education, so it's a good time to improve your uh, skill set during this cycle. Sun enters the first house, 22nd of November. That means that the sun moves to Sagittarius, your sun sign. So you can expect most of you at some time during the coming month an upliftment of your uh, physical well-being and your confidence too. So this is uh, a welcome relief from the sun being placed in that quiet and maybe doubtful 12th house that has been in right now. Um, the remaining aspects for the month, which I think are worth mentioning, Venus to Saturn, that uh, preserves your ability to, you know, deal rationally with your partner. <laughs> might not be too much spice in the bedroom, but at least you'll have some understanding there with the one that you love. Uh, the square to Neptune is not so good for matters around the home or someone in your family around the 25th. We see Mercury in conjunction to Saturn around the same time, the 26th, meaning that you've got to think carefully before you open your mouth and uh, don't dismiss anyone that is uh, bringing problems to you because that's going to come back to bite you on the proverbial sometime down the track. Mercury trines the uh, ruling planet Jupiter for you on the 28th. That gives you excellent judgment. And uh, if you're in a speculative mood, it might be the time to do something of that nature. Just don't spend too much. Gambling's never a good idea. And uh, this last aspect I want to talk about is a pretty intense one around the 28th as well. Uh, second and eighth house aspects, meaning money, joint resources, shared resources. Uh, if you've got children, don't let them spend too much and don't give them your credit card. <laughs> that might even involve your partner too. So uh, extend that little prediction. Hope to see you here next month. Uh, in the meantime, astrology.com.au for more detailed information on this and uh, the coming year in focus, lots of free readings and uh, our personal services there, including mine, if you want a more personal reading. Look forward to your company next month. Bye-bye.